Hi guys, uh, I've created a spreadsheet and I'm doing a video to help you guys understand how to do a cash flow forecast. Um, so it's a bit rough and ready, but time is obviously of the essence. Um, in my opinion, this is by far the most important thing that you need to do um, within the next few days. So you all run the risk of um, if you're closing your workshop or you're going to see a severely impacted uh, revenue, you run the risk of becoming insolvent by the end of the month. Insolvent simply means that you, you haven't got enough cap, uh, uh, liquidity to uh, pay your debts. So if we talk about what liquidity is, and this is all of um, what you would call liquid assets, stuff that you can get your hand on and convert into cash. Um, so if we look in the top left hand corner of the spreadsheet, you need to start by understanding what the ending balance is of your liquidity. And for the purpose of this spreadsheet, I've based it on the last day in March. So we're not quite there yet. So you're going to have to do a little bit of forecasting. But essentially, you need to put your ending bank balance in here, your amount of cash to bank, your uncleared card transactions. These are card payments that you're waiting to hit the bank and your available overdraft. And this will essentially give you a, a, a total liquidity or basically cash that you can spend. From this point, we then need to essentially forecast and plan how you expect the next 12 months to look, but in particular, the next three months, because it's the next three months where it can all go wrong very quickly. And in this video, I'm going to use this spreadsheet, uh, which will be available for you all to use yourself and actually actually model a scenario for you and just how easily you can get tripped up if you're not careful. Um, so we're going to take the scenario in which the garage closes for April, uh, which about 50% of garages seem to have done. You can use the spreadsheet if you are open as well, because you can just reduce the amount of income. Um, we're going to look at the scenario in which we've closed in April uh, and some of the considerations that we need to make to make sure we have enough funds to get us through the next couple of months. Um, and we can also introduce grants and loans into the cash flow forecast to see um, how we can get by without going insolvent. Um, so it's important to note that all prices on a cash flow forecast, if that is applicable, they need to include VAT. Debtors are referred to as an account customer or somebody who owes you money that is in your business, a debtor. And a creditor is somebody you owe money to. So you'll see the term debtors and creditors on cash flow statements. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by removing the revenue completely uh, from April. And it also stands to reason that we're not going to get um, our debtors aren't going to be paying us in April either. So we're going to remove both of these and the income is reduced down to zero. Now, one of the hardest parts of a cash flow forecast is actually trying to speculate your future revenue. It's a completely different task. Um, there are several things that you need to consider, but I'm not going to go into too much detail on that just yet because you should be able to, for the first three months, really understand what your revenue should be. When you get this spreadsheet, actually, I'll just go back a step. When you get this spreadsheet, you're going to get it with all of these figures in for you to have a play with. This is just a very sort of made up uh, workshop with the average sort of expenditures and overheads. You need to delete all of these. So to delete something, just press zero. Don't actually delete the cell. And then actually fill it in with your information. Uh, what I recommend that you do is print your bank statements off, um, get your last accounts, and just try and all of the costs, just try and get all of the costs into this spreadsheet. You can delete these and call what you, you know, rename these if you want to and group certain um, overheads together if it suits your business more. But whatever you do, you've got to make sure that you do get all of the outgoings put onto this spreadsheet. If you miss any outgoings off, you do run the risk of um, having what you think is a viable cash flow plan um, when it very much isn't. When you've completed this, you can always run it past your accountant as well, which I think is um, quite a safe thing to do. So I'm going to head back to this scenario now. So you can see here that in April, we've got no revenue. And at the minute, we are planning on open opening in May. And what we'll actually do is say we think we're going to be at half, probably about half capacity in May. And we still don't think that all of our debtors are actually going to pay us. So the debtors amount, I recommend that you just look at what on average you're paid with account work. 
So the problem with um, account work in moments like this is you're much less likely to get paid because everybody is in the same position. So you need to forecast what you expect to receive from account work. The income from sales is the stuff you literally take over the counter. So stuff that goes straight into your till or straight into your bank. Okay, so now we've forecasted the next two months um, where we expect the revenue to go. So we're closing and then we're opening in some capacity. So what you can see if we move down the spreadsheet, skip past the payments and the overheads, you can see that if there's a red cross, that's it, game over, we're insolvent. So at this point in time, I've not made any provisions or done anything at all. And at the end of April, that's the end of my company. And it doesn't look much better for the rest of the year. So what are some of the things that we can do? Well, we need to start by, in actual fact, I've already done this. So if we leave this in here, because I'm closed in April, it's safe to assume that I shouldn't have any creditors to pay in May because if we work on a 30-day account, if you work on 60-day accounts or no accounts and you need to adjust um, whichever month is applicable to you. And then in June, it's probably safe to assume that we're not going to be up to speed so the payments to our creditors isn't going to be quite um, what we'd expect on, a, on an average month. Um, so if... And this is an if, and I'm not saying that this works, but let's say you furloughed your staff and you've closed and you've furloughed all of your staff and you successfully received the grant from the government uh, for the furlough scheme. Again, I don't know if you will. Nobody yet knows all of the detail. Please speak to your accountant before you do anything at all. This is purely just to demonstrate how you can tackle cash flow problems. So one of the um, accepted things about the furlough scheme is that you're not going to get the money before the end of April. So let's say we get the um, furlough money in May. So we've got the PAYE actually, which is, that should be 4,000 and that should be 4,000. So the, the uh, payments in total is 28,000 pound. Let's say we get 28,000 pound back from, from successfully furloughing all of the staff. So what that's just done is it's actually bought the bank balance at the end of the year into a positive. But that is still no good. Just because we finished the year, we're not going to get there because we're already insolvent here. So this is the real shame of successful businesses. If you don't manage your cash flow properly, it doesn't matter how good a business you actually have. If you go insolvent, it's game over. So we still have a problem to solve. Even though in the long run, we're going to be okay. We've still got to get through this period just here. So one of the things that the government have said that they will do is defer VAT payments. So we can safely remove the VAT. But what we do need to do is add the VAT to the end of the year. Now, I don't know the exact rules, but I do know the VAT has to be paid back by the end of the financial year. Again, speak to your accountant about the detail, but I'm just going to throw it in later down the year um, anyway. So what that's actually done, um, we're good all year apart from April. So we're still insolvent at this point. We're still going to collapse as a business. Um, so one of the other things that the government has said that you can potentially do if you ring the HMRC is defer your VAT payment. So we could defer that payment. Let's say we managed to defer both payments, but we're we've got to pay it all in June. So again, still looking good down here, but you can see that we still have an insolvency issue here of £20,000. Um, okay, so you can see here that this company doesn't pay any rates, so they are part of the, they, they should, in theory, again, none of this is confirmed until people have actually had this paid, but they should, in theory, get the Small Business Rates Relief Grant. A grant is not repayable, um, and for small businesses, my understanding is that this is a £10,000 grant. Now, let's say this company is really lucky, and we get this grant in April. So we've received the £10,000 grant and the £28,000 furlough payment so two assumptions here neither of these are guaranteed at this point but you can see we're actually getting closer to managing our way out of this situation so a couple of other things that we can do then we can start to chop away um, some overheads for example if I'm closing you might not do any marketing again this is just all speculation you don't have to take any of this um, exactly as I'm saying it's not advice it's just examples of what you can do to save costs um, I'm actually going to give myself a pay cut just because everybody else has had a pay cut. 
um, I'm going to speak to my leasing company. I'm going to get that payment deferred. So that one can go. Um, insurance, you're going to have to pay. See, the rest of it, you, you've got to really pick and choose your battles between what costs can go when you are closed and what costs must remain. Um, this isn't to demonstrate that exercise. You're capable of doing that yourself. Um, okay, so what else we got? We've got a loan and a mortgage. Now, I know people have very successfully had loans and mortgages deferred. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to remove both of these. And we're getting even closer now, look. We're on 40, well, we've got 4,600 quid. So just short of 5,000 pound to find to get ourselves out of this mess. So one of the obvious things for me in this position would be to request an overdraft extension. So if I increase the overdraft to 25,000 pound, for example, that's it. I'm out of the scenario. So I'm no longer insolvent and providing the rest of my forecast is correct, then at the end of the year, I'm going to lose a little bit of cash. But given the circumstances, I don't think that's a bad situation to be in. So you can see that I entered the the crisis or let's say we entered April with £53,000 in the bank. Over the 12 months, we lost £1,300. So we exited the 12 month period with 52,130 pound in the bank. So you have, is this, which is the crisis point. It's the short term cash flow problem, which is really gonna catch people out. If you close for longer, then it becomes much trickier and you can only really solve it with big loans. I'm not gonna run through this in this video, but if you're planning on closing for say three months and you do the exact same exercise I've just done, it's almost impossible to solve without introducing a loan. Um, Feel free to use a spreadsheet, put your numbers in, and then just run some scenarios. Now, when you are approaching your banks, they're going to want to know why you need the money, how much money you need, and when you're going to repay the money. So I'll just run another scenario past you. Let's say we didn't have an overdraft, and you can see that we have a £20,000 deficit in month one. Well, I go to the bank for a really short-term loan of £20,000. So I can very, very clearly demonstrate to the bank that I need this £20,000 um in april to not become insolvent but in actual fact i could probably pay that back yeah you can actually pay that back so just it's just how um vicious this cash flow problem can actually be from one month to the next just by oh, I just pressed by accident just by borrowing money for one month and paying it back the following month i'm no longer insolvent so I actually survived the entire year. So again, um, yeah, use a spreadsheet. If you've got any questions, then please let me know. Just chuck it in one of the, any of the forums um, that I post this video into. I hope this helps you out. Even if you're not capable of filling this entire spreadsheet in, what I would really like you all to do is just wake up to the urgency behind understanding cash flow. It's a really difficult period that we're going into. It's super stressful for every business, but not understanding your cash flow will kill what was once a very healthy business. So um, any questions guys, then just please let me know, thank you.